What is going on guys? Spartan Navazulu here bringing you another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle and I am so sorry I've been uh, silent for the last like what week and a half maybe. It has just been a uh, rough going and real life has hit me hard between getting sick, moving into a new house and then school. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but I was able to get a Pokemon Wi-Fi battle together and I was able to get this Pokemon breakdown ready of Halucha. Uh, my Halucha. The nature is adamant. 252 attack. Uh, 252 speed with four in the defense and an adamant nature and the reason you can go with an adamant nature is because of the of the uh, ability unburdened now what that means is when this pokemon uses its item its speed is doubled making it an awesome little sweeper that can just take out unsuspecting teams or the teams that just have a problem with it uh, going to the stats 297 hp 283 attack 187 defense 165 special attack 162 special defense with a speed of 335 Meaning that once this Pokemon's item is used, its speed jumps to 670. There is not a lot of Pokemon in the meta that can outspeed this Pokemon after it consumes its item. Uh, even, after, even if they're holding a Choice Scarf or anything like that. Now, if they get multiple, like, you know, Dragon Dances or Shift Gears off, then yeah, eventually they'll outspeed it. But that is the beauty of Halucha. And he's got, his coverage isn't too bad. Uh, this Halucha's uh, move set is Swords Dance, High Jump Kick. Uh, acrobatics and poison jab. Poison jab is kind of needed in my opinion because I mean the tapus are rampant and the tapus are fairies so that's kind of a needed move in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> Swords dance just because uh, at 290 at a uh, 283 I mean that attack just is not that great. Swords dance just kind of boosts its attack a little bit to make it a more threatening mon. Uh, so this Pokemon uh, it's it's holding for mine for instance is holding the item electric seed and now what that does is when you have a Tapu Koko out, and Tapu Koko brings out its electric terrain, once Halucha goes out with the electric terrain up, it consumes its item, raising its defense one stage, and activating Unburdened to double its speed. So it's a little bit easier to set up than the past Haluchas, where they used, I think, the Power Herb or something like that, to do a Sky Attack in one turn, and then that used the item up, and the speed was doubled. This is a lot easier to do now in this generation, thanks to the, uh, thanks to the seeds. So it doesn't have to be um, Tapu Koko either. You can do it with any of the Tapus. I prefer Tapu Koko because, as y'all know, he's my favorite. So um, <clears throat> that's my Halucha. Uh, the teams that I used for him were kind of mixed. I got between, like, 1,300 to the mid-1,500s. I'm still trying to break that 1,700 curse. I have not been able to do it. Moving on to the Wi-Fi battle with LaFlair. This guy's an awesome freaking Wi-Fi battler. He's in my Discord server. Uh, this battle was on the 3DS. I've actually been having a little bit of difficulty finding matches on, on Citra. Uh, so with that being said, let's get ready to rock and roll, and we're going to get on with the battle. Uh, you guys saw the team make up. This, with this team, I, I went with an Excadrill lead, and it's a little off-putting for me. I, I like it, but as you guys know, I like anti-leads more. So he, she, uh, he's going to go with the Mega Metacham, and already I'm in trouble because my Excadrill is holding a Focus Sash, and Fake Out is going to break the Sash, and then he'll just be able to high jump kick and take Excadrill out without setting up my Entry Hazard. So I'm going to switch and go into Gyarados, just, you know, something to soak up the Fake Out. And <clears throat> Fake Out is going to do quite a bit of damage to Gyarados because, I mean, Mega Metacham, it's one of the pure power, the, one of the pure power Pokemon so once it Mega Evolves, it just becomes an awesome, awesome offensive poke. It's it's just, it's ridiculous. And take a look at this. Fake Out on Gyarados doing a very good amount of damage from just that. So uh, I don't want to take the Thunder Punch or the Zen Headbutt. I'm going to switch out and go back into uh, into Exadrill to just kind of just kind of soak the Zen Headbutt. And <clears throat> I'm really just in a, in a bit of a bind here. Because he had a lot better start of the match than I did. And like I said, this, this Excadrill's moveset is Stealth Rock, Earthquake, Rapid Spin, and Toxic. And uh, it's just a weird... I'll, I'll do more matches with it. It's just a weird little hazard Pokemon that I got going on with. Uh, its main purpose is just to get hazards up and then get taken out. It's a suicide lead. Uh, going with Tapu Koko, and I caught a break there to dodge up dip dip dive and dodge that high jump kick putting it at half health that was a very lucky break for me uh because i mean this mega metacham was all over my team just right from the start going with ferrothorn 
And I mean, I knew he was going to switch. He doesn't want to lose Mega Metacham yet. I'm going to go ahead and go for the Volt Switch to get some uh, Pivot Temple going. And I found out a cool little thing about Tapu Koko is, you know, his special attack, like I said, it's not that high. And uh, he is very fast. But if you throw a Choice Specs on him, it's an awesome freaking set. And it makes up for the lack of points in his special attack. Going back into Extra Drill, and I can set up my entry hazards there. <clears throat> um, and then along with his with Ferrothorn. So, I was able to finally get my entry hazards up after just switching around on the Mega Metacham. And, uh, I mean, didn't really make a difference there. Uh, his entry hazards are up. And now I'm kind of, I mean, pretty much Excadrill did what he's supposed to do. I'm going to go ahead and Rapid Spin and just get rid of his entry hazards. And this is pretty much how you use this Excadrill. I mean, if, if it was any other Pokemon, I would have toxic to poison it, but you can't Toxic a Ferrothorn because of it's still typing, which sucks. But now, I mean, Excadrill can just do what it needs to do and get taken out. And that's the thing I don't like about this lead, is once Excadrill sets up his Stealth Rocks and spreads his Toxic around once or twice, he's kind of done. Especially with all the flying types that are out in the meta. You could go with Iron Head over Toxic, uh, just to, you know, have some extra Womp and coverage against some other Pokemon. But Toxic just really does help against certain Mons. In this match, it didn't help too much. Uh, I'm going to go with Mega Pinsir. I've never used a Pinsir before. I was just trying it out to try it out. <clears throat> and I've had kind of mixed results with it. But I'm going to go ahead and go for the Swords Dance. Because there's not much I can see Ferrothorn doing to Mega Pinsir. Or so I thought. Because, you know, some Ferrothorns are pretty aggressive. So Gyro Ball is going to deal a good amount of damage to, to Mega Pinsir. And look at that. Uh, so I, I really should have been more careful there. I shouldn't have exploited Pinsir a little too too early there. But, I mean, you know, what can you do? Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and go for the close combat. And I know he's going to switch. And he's got a Zapdos. So Zapdos is one of the Pokemon that you got to watch out for when you're running Halucha. Because Zapdos completely walls Halucha. Halucha can really do nothing to a Zapdos. Unless it's already been weakened. But other than that... There's not a lot Halucha can do to a Zapdos. Close combat after the Swords Dance coming in to do a decent amount of damage to the Zapdos. So now I'm thinking Return may do the job here. I mean, I know I still got to watch out for Static, but it's already below 50% health thanks to the Stealth Rocks. Taking a uh, close combat that's, you know, plus two. So going for the Return, and it becomes a flying type attack, though, thanks to Aerial Eight. And Zapdos does resist it, but the damage is just too much, and he cannot take it. Zapdos is out of the match. So, I got a, another little break there, <clears throat> taking out Zapdos. But, the Entei, you know, I, I really don't know what I could have switched into here, because I, I know Entei gets extreme speed, so I I expected to lose Mega Pinsir. I probably should have gone back into Gyarados, but I mean, that's that's on me, I guess. <laughs> So Extreme Speed from Entei, taking my Mega Pinsir out of the match. Uh, I'm honestly not that big of a fan of Mega Pin Pinsir. I wasn't that impressed. In my opinion, it is, it is. I mean, it does have its, you know, its advantages, but it's just it's just too slow, and outside of Quick Attack, it doesn't really have a lot to offer in priority. That's just me. I've seen people, you know, sweep. I've even been, been sweep by Mega Pinsir before. I'm just going by my two cents. I don't like it. So going back with Tapu Koko, holding a Choice Specs, making it freaking awesome, and I know he's going to switch, so I'm just going to keep my pivot tempo going, and I'm going to go for the Volt Switch, and just, just keep it going. I mean, right now, I'm not in a bad position. I could be in a better position, so I'm kind of feeling a little confident here, and I'm going to bring in Hollow Chest, and just see what I can get going. Uh, the only thing that I forgot, I forgot that he had a Clefable, and depending on, I mean, Clefable can be ran multiple ways. you got to watch out for which type of Clefable. The Clefable he had has the ability Unaware. And what that does is it ignores stat changes to the Pokemon. So I could have Swords Dance three times in a row, maximizing my attack. This Clefable wouldn't have cared. If it was a Magic Guard Clefable, yeah, you know, I probably would have done the job here. But, I mean, what can you do? <clears throat> so Clefable, Unaware Clefable at least is another Pokemon you got to watch out for. Uh, because like I said, it ignores stat changes, whether, you know, good or bad. 
and a poison jab coming in because it's ignoring the swords dance it's not going to do much to clefable clefable's just going to laugh at it and moonblast is going to take out my halucha i at least poisoned it but i mean i was hoping to take it out and get the sweep going because with the pokemon he had left if this clefable was not unaware i think i could have gotten the sweep but oh well i mean what can you do there goes halucha so i didn't really <laughs> i didn't really get to use halucha right this match and had I known this was an unaware Clefable, I would have waited to expose him so early and I would have taken it out. But, <clears throat> oh well. Going back into Tabu Koko. And now, I'm going to go ahead and go for the Thunder. Uh, I actually got rid of Thunder because I got tired of it missing so much. And yes, I mean, Thunder's an awesome attack when it hits. But its chance to miss is just way too high. And you're, you're rolling the dice way too much with it. So I got rid of it. But Thunder on a Choice Specs Tapu Koko, it's awesome. It's awesome when it hits. When it does its job, it's awesome. Uh, going with his friggin', ah, the friggin' Pokemon that I always forget. But it's the Poison and Rock type. And it's Scarfed. I am pretty sure I have nothing left for this Pokemon. And I'm about to get swept here. Sludge Wave is going to do a decent amount of damage to Gyarados. And, yeah. I'm in trouble here, guys. Maybe because I'm pretty sure I got nothing for this. Nihilgo. That's what this freaking Pokemon's name is. I always forget its name. Nihilgo. Sludge Wave. Taking out Gyarados. And it's going to get the Beast Boost. Yep. I really don't know what I could have done. Or, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Because, uh, yeah. This superior is holding a choice scarf, by the way, but I don't. No, I took choice scarf away. Choice scarf superior is fun, but I don't. It's not as cool as I thought it would. Uh, got a critical hit, but that didn't matter. So, yeah. Sludge Wave is going to take out superior. And the Beast Boost is going to make this Nihil go even stronger. So, I mean, I at least, you know, found out that uh, the critical hit did not even mean anything. I mean, it was a stab leaf blade without the special attack boost getting the critical hit, and it still didn't matter. So that's, that's whatever. Uh, bringing in Tabu Koko who is weak to poison attacks thanks to its fairy typing. And Sludge Wave is going to take Tapu Koko out of the match, giving LaFleur the win. Oh, well. Good game, LaFleur. And like I said, this team is is was just one of the teams I was playing around with. I didn't do too well with this one. Uh, but my next team, I have a lot of... I had a lot of good... Uh, a lot of good matches with going against Brayden, another uh, another DS battle with someone from my Discord server. Um, <clears throat> looking at his team, it looks awesome, but only one ground type, so I don't got to worry too much. I just need to get rid of that Gliscor so that I can pivot freely with Tabu Koko, uh, because with this team, I mean, I like doing my Volt switches with Tabu Koko, and if there's a ground type in the scenario. Well, you know, I can't really do that. I'm going with Mega Heracross. And I'm going to start off with Tapu Koko holding that choice specs. So now comes the dilemma of does he want to lose Heracross? Does he want to take the chance of taking a Hidden Power Ice? But I went with Dazzling Gleam just in case, which is a good thing I did. Tangrowth is going to come in and look at this. Choice specs Tapu Koko with a Dazzling Gleam. Taking Tangrowth well below 50% health. That is awesome. That is the kind of special attack power that Tapu Koko needed. And he's got it with the choice with the uh, choice specs. Toxapex is going to come in. I knew he was going to switch. I don't know why I didn't switch. But Toxapex is going to come in. And Dazzling Gleam is not going to do that much to Toxapex. Because it's very good with a special defensive stat. And it's a poison type so it resists it. I knew he was going to switch. I don't know why I didn't just go for the switch. I mean, he wouldn't have wanted to lose Tangrowth. Tangrowth is just such an important wall, especially at the start of the game like that. So I'm going to switch, and I'm going to go into Superior. 
because I'm thinking, I mean, Toxapex doesn't really have a lot of, uh, of poison moves. I haven't, I don't think I've come across a Toxapex with a poison move besides like Toxic Spike or something like that. So he sets up his Toxic Spikes. The good thing about my Superior though is that it has a defog. So if I can get a free minute, I can defog. But I also want to take out Toxapex. And the good thing, the good thing for me about his team is the only Pokemon he has that really resists my Superior was Alolan Ninetales. So, Leaf Storm doing a very good amount of damage to Toxapex, and he's going to go for the Infestation, which I don't have to worry too much about, uh, because, yes, it's going to deal damage, but I have Leftovers, so I'm kind of just losing what I've already recovered, maybe like one or two points more. Uh, and so I'm not too worried about the Infestation. And if he switches, then the Infestation goes away, so I don't got to worry about it. So I'm sitting at a, a plus two Leaf Storm. And he's going to go ahead and bail for Baleful Bunker, which I should have probably defogged, but at the same time I wanted to get rid of Toxapex, so I went for the Leaf Storm again. Because, I mean, now it's it's without a doubt. If I hit Toxapex with Leaf Storm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it out. So I don't got to worry too much about Toxapex here. Uh, although I, he could have switched out. Sw gone into what? Maybe, maybe he should have gone into that Alolan Ninetales. But then again, I have Hidden Power Fire on my Superior, so I had very good move coverage here. Or type coverage here, I mean. And anyways, he's going to keep Toxapex in. And Leaf Storm is going to take Toxapex out of the match. Getting rid of a very annoying wall in the OU meta. So that was awesome on me. That was very awesome on me. Now, I mean, uh... He does have Pokemon that can do with Superior. Superior is not just going to be able to sweep the entire team here. I know that. He's going to bring in Heracross. And with a plus two special attack. Well, technically times four. Maybe, I don't know. Either way. I'm hoping Hidden Power Fire will do the job. Because, I mean, it's Heracross. It's weak to fire. Uh, sadly, though, <laughs> I don't have Stealth Rocks up. Which, me saying that, should have told you guys where this is going. Hidden Power Fire. Coming in, I thought it was going to take it out, but it leaves it like at maybe 3 or 4 HP. And Mega Heracross lives to pin missile my superior and take it out of the match. Oh well. It would have been awesome to take out Mega Heracross with hidden power. But oh well. That's why you need entry hazards, guys. You got to set up entry hazards. <laughs> so, But then again, like, I don't like, I like entry hazards. Like, I know entry hazards are necessary, but I don't like setting them up at the beginning of the match when you can just come out swinging. Like that, that's just how I feel. So I'm going to go with uh, Tapu Koko. And uh, the Heracross is at such low health, I know Hidden Power Ice will do the job. So just in case he switches, I go with Hidden Power Ice. He switches, and he switches into Gliscor. Without Choice Specs, this would not have done the job. But with Choice Specs, Hidden Power Ice, knocking Gliscor out of the match for the Yoko. That is what I'm talking about. That is what Tapu Koko needed. So I am I am in love with Choice Specs Tapu Koko. It is just an awesome set. Going to Porygon Z. So I'm going to have to switch here because Hidden Power Ice is not going to do anything to it. The only Pokemon I can think to go into is my Mega Tyranitar. Uh, I, used to, I used Tyranitar back in like the Diamond and Pearl days. And I liked it. I liked it a lot. But I kind of just stopped using it. And I've never used its Mega Evolution, and there's not really much of a difference between the Mega Evolution and, you know, regular Tyranitar, except maybe the stats get higher. But it's still it's still an awesome Pokemon. So, Porygon Z, going with the Z conversion, which changes its type. And it's going to go ahead and change it to a Ghost type, which, pity my, uh, my Tyranitar didn't have any Dark Moves, because that would have been awesome. I could have taken this freaking thing out with a Crunch. Uh, but no... My Mega Tyranitar's moveset is Dragon Dance, Fire Punch, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. And uh, I went with Earthquake because the one weakness of this team is that freaking Pokemon Magearna. I hate Magearna. And uh, any other team, I don't really hate it. But with this team, yeah, Magearna just kind of wrecks it. And I mean, Mega Tyranitar is not the best answer to Magearna because it's weak to Magearna's fairy type attacks. But I mean, if I get a Dragon Dance off, I can take it out with Fire Punch or Earthquake. Anyways, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and go for the Dragon Dance because I know Porygon Z can't really do much to Mega Tyranitar in the sand. Uh, if it had Focus Blast, I would have been worried big time. But thankfully it doesn't. Went for the Thunderbolt to get the boost from the uh, the Electric Surge. And now 
<clears throat> after a dragon dance, I'm hoping a stone edge will just take out this Porygon Z. So stone edge coming in, not taking it out of the match, but it's low enough to where it will get buffeted by the sand and taken out. So I lose Mega Tyranitar, and thanks to the sandstorm buffing Porygon Z in the face, Porygon Z is out of the match. So neutral ground there. Going back with Tapu Koko because he does not have a ground type anymore. I am free to Volt Switch as much as I want. And Alola Ninetales is going to come in. The remaining Pokemon that are left, Alola Ninetales, Heracross, and uh, I don't remember the... Oh, Tangrowth. I'm thinking I can start setting up... Uh, setting up Halucha here. So going with Heracross and Volt Switch to take Heracross out of the match, and I'm going to bring Halucha in to just start the process of sweeping. Because, I mean, the last two Pokemon, Halucha has coverage against. I know Poison Jab to take out the Alola Ninetales, because remember, it, Alola Ninetales is Ice and Fairy. Fire types hit it for neutral damage. So, High Jump Kick probably wouldn't have done the job. Uh, but I go in with, with Halucha, get the Electric Seed usage to double my speed. I'm good to set up here. I, I'm, I'm set up. I can take out the remaining two Pokemon, hopefully. I just need to get a Swords Dance off. But I was kind of intimidated by the Ninetales, so I went ahead and went for the High Jump Kick, ignoring the Swords Dance, getting a critical hit, and taking Ninetales out of the match. I don't think that would have O-Code. I'm pretty sure that crit mattered. That that was a lucky crit. I don't think I would have taken it out because my attack isn't, isn't the best. And, I mean, I didn't have a Swords Dance up. Tangrowth. Coming in and getting taken out of the match by the Acrobatics. Acrobatics also doubles in power if the Pokemon that uses it does not have an item. And since I use my item, you know, I don't have an item. So that's the benefit. It lived through the Acrobatics, but the hail from the Alola Ninetales is going to take Tangrowth out of the match. So it's good to be back, guys. I'm sorry I was gone for so long. Very good games, Brayden and LaFlair. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. I will check y'all later and see y'all again Monday. Have a good weekend, everybody.